beloved congregation of our Lord Jesus Christ. This morning we will witness the ordination of new office bearers. Newly appointed brothers will take over the task. It's a sign of God's grace on our congregation. In a similar way, God showed His grace to our, brothers and our Old Testament brothers and sisters when the special office of high priest went from Aaron to Eliezer. And despite limitations in their persons and functioning, God continued this special office. He provides others to take on the task. And by doing that, pointing also to the eternal office bearer who will complete what Aaron, Eliezer, and the current and the new office bearers will never be able to complete. If I have summarized the message as follows, in His mercy, God continues the high priestly office. First of all, despite Aaron's sin and death, Second, intermediately through Eliezer. And third, perfectly in Jesus Christ. In His mercy, God continues the high priestly office. First, despite of Aaron's sin and death. Congregation, God's covenantal people Israel have left Kadesh. And during the time there, Moses and Aaron's older sister Miriam passed away. The next stop was Mount Hor, close to Edom's border. And here we witness, we are witnessing a remarkable death of a man. And we all know this man, Aaron, the high priest, 123 years old, almost 40 years in office. Aaron, the man of the Ministry of Reconciliation, the man representing his people with God, and God with His people. But now the time has come to say goodbye. He donned his high priestly robes for the last time. And at the command of God, they climbed the mountain whore. Moses, Aaron's brother, and Eliezer, Aaron's son. On the top of the mountain, Aaron will die. In due time, God's people may enter the promised land, but Aaron will not enter. And so we see him climbing the slope of Mount Hor, a man on his way to his own grave, a quiet, poignant funeral procession. The eyes of God's people resting on their backs. Only two family members accompany him and look at him he wears a blue robe which strongly contrasts with the barren rocks golden bells and pomegranates are hanging at the bottom shining in the sun visible and audible Aaron goes golden ephod flashing in the sun and strapped on his chest the breastplate with twelve different radium gems with the names of the twelve tribes of Israel engraved on them. And on his head, a turban with a plate of pure gold. On it is written, Sanctify the Lord. Aaron, a consecrated man, ready to die. Our text puts it a bit more solemn. Aaron will now be gathered to his people. And this expression, brothers and sisters, does not indicate that he will be buried with his ancestors, because that's not the case with Aaron. He will be buried on Mount Hall. The phrase refers to a peaceful death in faith. Aaron will die in communion with his God, with his Sanctified by God, sanctified and beloved ancestors. However, this phrase also indicates 
his limitations. Because in his death, Aaron did not get any further than his ancestors. They also died, did, they also died, did not die in their own country. So also Aaron dies outside the borders of the promised land. Why? Well, our text gives the reason. Together with Moses, they have gone against the orders of the Lord at the waters of Meribah. Meribah. And that was not the first time. We know how Aaron fabricated and inaugurated the golden calf to the dismay and the anger of Moses. And later with his sister Miriam, he challenged Moses' God-given position. But for those two transgressions, he had not been punished. He repented. And God has forgiven him. But at the water of Meribah, Aaron didn't oppose Moses, but joined forces with him against the Lord. And what was their sin? Pride is often suggested in children's Bibles as the reason for their sin. As if Moses and Aaron would have said to Israel, we will give you water from this rock. Oh, beloved, that's not the case. When Moses says, must we bring water for you out of this rock? He only said what the Lord has told him in verse 20, chapter 20, verse 8. Now, the sin of Moses and Aaron was that they did not speak to the rock, but hid it with a staff, even twice. That was their, their way to ventilate their frustration, their anger. These smacks were not meant for the rock, but for the people. Moses and Aaron acted as if the Lord were angry with his people. And indeed, the Lord has more than once been angry with his people. But not this time. We hear no reproach from God's mouth towards his people. He has decided to provide his people with water, graciously and without reproach. He wanted to confound them with His grace by an undeserved gift. He proved that He is holy and, and different than men. Yet yeah, man, man hits back in their injustice. But He is God and not man. Holy in their midst. Isaiah 11. He wanted Moses and Aaron to show that. His undeserved grace. But Moses and Aaron have indulged their own anger and thus deprived Israel of God's sign of grace. And then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, verse 12, Because you did not believe me to hallow me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given you. God wanted to show His holiness in His mercy. Here it's all about God's holiness. And Moses and Aaron sin against God's holiness in His mercy. Yes, they have fallen in the same sin of rebellion that they accused the people of. And for this sin, Aaron and later Moses will pay with their lives. And beloved, this danger is real for every office bearer. With our anger and frustration, we can hinder God's grace to sinful ward members. I know it's sometimes hard not to get angry and frustrated in our office. But we always need to ask ourselves, when we get frustrated, is this about me or about the Lord? Am I more legalistic, righteous than the Lord? Or less gracious and patient than the Lord in my office? Am I expressing my opinion? Or is it God's word that I pass on to those under my care? Back to our text. 
At God's command, Moses and Aaron and Eliezer started to ascend Mount Hor. Their departure, their departure is witnessed by all the people. And here Israel received a visible teaching of the Lord. There's something extra they need to learn about the priesthood from this situation. For they looked on. Yes, Aaron, he was their man. They had high expectations from him. But where was all this going? And wasn't it actually their fault? They had challenged Moses and Aaron. Aaron, the man that sacrificed on the tabernacle on their behalf. Due to their sin resulting in his discretion, Aaron will not enter the promised land. Beloved brothers and sisters, I know that the departing office bearers are not Aaron. And the Lord willing, they will still be with us next week in the time, and in the time to come. However, the same feeling can be ours when we see them laying down their offices. How did we, as we look upon them, as people looked upon Moses and Aaron, or Aaron sending the mount, Mount Hall, how did we respond to their office? Do we, or did we receive them as servants of God? Did we respect them as overseers who, despite their own weaknesses, labored among us? Did we esteem them very highly in love because of their work? Did we submit to their authority as men who watched over our souls? Did we obey them so that their work could be done in joy and not as a burden? Did we take care that the deacons had sufficient means to fulfill their ministry? These questions we ask shoulder to shoulder with our Old Testament brothers and sisters. And see the people silently looking at Aaron as he left to lay down his office. How will things now end? Particularly with all their rebellious actions. Is this, is this now the end of the service of atonement? Will they have to proceed without a high priest? No. God in His grace did not forget His people. And in His mercy, God continues the highly priest office. And that's our second point, intermediately through Eliezer. Many years ago, Moses ordained Aaron in his office. He had put the tunic on him, girded him with a sash, clothed him with the robe, and put the ephod on him. He girded him with the intricately woven band of the ephod. And with it tied the ephod on him. He put the breastplate on him. And he put the urim in the tomb, the two stones on the breastplate. He also put the turban on his head. And on the turban, he put the holy crown in front. The golden plate with the words engraved on it, holy to the Lord. But as they reached the top of Mount Hall, Moses had to strip Aaron of this complete high priestly dress. All the signs of his priestly dignity, he had to take off. The clothes, the belt, the breastplate with the twelve stones and the turban. For in a moment, Aaron will die. And there Aaron stood on the mountain as a man without office. He stood there in his undergarment, bare in the sight of God. There was the man who on their behalf entered the Most Holy on the Day of Atonement. The man who prayed for them to God. The man who blessed them on God's behalf. He could not even die in the harness, so to speak. 
He had to lay down his office before his death. He could not bear his office through death and grave. For death forced him to discontinue his office. Hebrews 7 verse 23. And beloved, it was obvious. His office could not deliver that for which the Lord had intended it. Aaron had to die outside his office. And even outside of the side of the people. The sad funeral described to us in Deuteronomy 10 verse 6. But brothers and sisters, the Lord did not let Aaron leave without comfort. No, he may die on a mountain right in the sight of God and in God's presence. And he might die in connection with his ancestors. In the same faith, the same promises. It is God's comfort to a man who, despite of his weakness and sin, has led God's people and performed great service. Despite everything he did wrong, he still was one of the men God chose to serve them. And his death will not be followed with scorn and gossip in the tabloid press about his deserved punishment or his work, weak work as office bearer. No, Israel will respectfully mourn 30 days long. That is God's comfort to him. But there is more. Because for the future, God's people shouldn't have any concerns. Yes, Israel lost their beloved Aaron, but not their high priest. Because just before his death, Aaron may see how Eliezer gets dressed with his priestly robe. Aaron must die, but his successor is ready. God, in His grace, looks after His people. And beloved, it is striking how the Lord does this. How He specifically watch, watches over the purity of the high priesthood, and particularly the priestly garments. Because among God's people, there was one man who had to avoid contact with dead people at all costs. That was the high priest. He was not even allowed to attend the funeral of his close relatives, according to Leviticus 21. The high priest was that person in Israel whose garments reflected the promise of eternal life. That is what God for those who died in God. And everything that came into contact with the dead was unclean and unfit for service to God. And so God instructed Aaron to be stripped of his garment to prevent it from being contaminated by death, Aaron's own death. We see the Lord at the death of Aaron watch over the high priesthood in Israel. Yes, Aaron's own sons, Nadab and Abihu, they were slain while still dressed in their priestly garments, and they were most probably buried in them. But with Aaron it is different. Because his garments remain clean, the high priestly service remains intact. Yes, the prospect of eternal life remains intact. How gracious is God. And how powerful his acts on that day, on, that, on Mount Hall. And when Moses, after Aaron's funeral, descends the mountain with Eliezer, Israel again, and still has a high priest. And with Eliezer, there is no new priesthood, but a continuation of the service of Aaron, his father. This is, the, this is evident from the simple cause of events on that mountain. For at the ordination of Aaron and his sons, there had been a whole week of festivities and different rituals. That is not necessary now. Only the high priest garments changes from the one to the other bearer. What an awesome God we have to provide in such a wonderful way. Beloved, isn't that to an extent the same today. The Lord continues to provide new office bearers. And I know the new office bearers are not Eliezer's, but God is still good to us by continuing 
the special office. The garment is, so to speak, carried on from the retiring to the new office bearers. No, not a, not a real garment, but a spiritual garment. These brothers are sanctified and equipped, dressed with the Holy Spirit. And they have the same Word of God to share. They also carry the congregation, so to speak, just as the high, pri high priest did with the golden plate of the twelve gems. They carry the congregation on their breast, near their, close to their heart. And they may continue this task in the same spirit and the same confessions as the previous office bearers. No, Eliezer was not a perfect man. And so the new office bearers also will struggle with their own weaknesses. But they may continue this service in the strength of the Lord God Almighty, the same one who addressed Eliezer on that day. Yet there's still something else to be added. For both Eliezer and the new office bearers are intermediate office bearers. For Eliezer, his office pointed to the perfect office of Jesus Christ in his first coming. Our office bearers, office bearers' task calls for the completion of the office in Christ's second coming. For in His mercy, God continues the highly priestly office as He perfect, perfectly in Jesus Christ. Our third point. Indeed, a wonderful expression of God's grace. His continuation of the priesthood. It was great that God gave Aaron a successor. And it's wonderful to be able to ordain new office bearers today. The Lord does not let go what He has begun. He is faithful in His plan. However, Eliezer was not a perfect office bearer. Neither were all the priests from the house of Aaron who succeeded him in the following generations, since death prevented them from staying priest. And beloved, this all, this all calls for a better priest, higher than Aaron and Eliezer, one who has indeed come. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the great high priest, more than Aaron and Eliezer is he, they were not, no more than, than a shadow of him. They could not even stand in his shadow. He is not a priest after the order of Aaron because he was not from the tribe of Levi. He was a priest in a different and higher order. This eternal high priest was according to Melchizedek's order. And we know Melchizedek from the Old Testament, a king in Salem, who was at the same time God's priest, a unique person. And so with Christ, He is the priest without successor, because He lives forever, says Hebrews 7. He ever lives and pleads, and can therefore save all who draw near to God through Him as priest. And beloved, He did His work on earth in perfect obedience to His Father, compared to Aaron. Yes, His glory surpasses Aaron's unmeasurable. And in what way? How did that happen? Well, Christ's death was different from that of Aaron. A death in function. An atoning death. He is the perfect Savior who embodies the perfect atonement for all our sins He has paid. Yes, he also died on the mountain. But beloved, what happened on Mount Calvary was far more impressive than what happened on Mount Hall. For he was abandoned, abandoned by men, but also by God. Completely naked, hanging there on the cross. Soldiers have divided his clothes by gambling. Yet, he died in office. In his office. He died as the lamb and the high priest with a direct appointment 
from God. What Aaron could not do, and what we will never be able to do, he did. He wore his office through death and grave. And in his grave he paved the way to a new and eternal life. Aaron was gathered to his ancestors. He couldn't go beyond those. But Christ did come forth, came, came farther, further than his ancestors. Yes, Christ died under God's curse to set them free. And yes, just like Aaron, he died and was buried. But he did not remain in death. He came from the tomb. He ascended to heaven and take his mediator position next to the Father. His priesthood did not cease upon his death, but he put it forth for all eternity. And today, at this very moment, he pleads for us as high priest. He makes intercession for you and me for the sins that we've committed this past week, but also are committing now in our shortcomings. Thanks to him, we already have a place in heaven. And he will carry us, and he carries us all through death and grave. What we shall be is not yet revealed. But we know that we shall that we shall be like him and will serve God on a new earth as priests forever. Aaron's death brought forty days of mourning, thirty days of mourning. Christ's death brings eternal joy. Brothers and sisters, an eternal joy that begins here and now as we rejoice in the ordination of new office bearers. And when we have to appear before God, we will not be naked, but clothed with Christ's righteousness, white clothes, washed in the blood of the Lamb. And this means that you brothers, new office bearers, can do your work thanks to His amazing work. No, you don't have Israel to look after. You are blessed and that you may work among a royal priesthood. 1 Peter 2. Thanks to Christ's work. Thanks to our great high priest in the house of the Lord we all have the office as priests and have access to God. Hebrews 10. And therefore, as office bearers, called by God Himself, through this royal priesthood, discharge faithfully the duties of your office in His strength. Adorn it with, God, with a godly life, not hindering the congregation to receive and experience God's grace both in governance of this priesthood and in the ministry of mercy among them. And may the Almighty God be glorified and praised through all your endeavors. Not only until other brothers take over from you, but until the day that the trumpet sounds and the high priest appears who has on his garment and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen.